is our executive director of the Sewage and Water Board, and also joining us is Kelly Chandler, our regional director for our Flood Protection Authority East. So this morning, uh, what we're going to do, and as you all know, I know that you've been watching, but the bottom line is, and the greatest takeaway is that we do have a major storm heading our way. We are activating every single resource at our disposal so that we are prepared to respond. You know, we plan for this all year long. We plan for this. And we communicate effectively with the residents of the city of New Orleans. And so at this time, we were briefed uh, by the National Weather Service. This remains a very fluid situation, as most of these do, but very fluid. But we must and we will start seeing winds, as I'm told, as early as tomorrow night. Landfall is expected sometime on Sunday with heavy rains as well as an impact overnight into Monday morning. Again, a very fluid situation, but we'll continue to monitor. The earliest reasonable time is late Saturday night. Preparations, as you should know, should be completed by this time frame. Again, your preparations completed by tomorrow afternoon. Later today, and really I've already signed the declaration in terms of making sure that uh, this is and we have in place the declaration of emergency, which will be filed with the courts by our city attorney, Ms. Sunny LaBeouf. Prior to this, I've rendered my signature already. At this time, I will be and I am calling for mandatory evacuation of all areas outside of our levy protection system. All areas outside of our levy protection system. Definitely mandatory evacuation. If you have any medical needs or wish to voluntarily evacuate on your own, now is the time to start that. Voluntary evacuation. Now is the time to start. We know that threat levels may increase as confidence in the forecast continues to intensify. So we'll continue to monitor. We understand it's still fluid, but this is the time to take action. Lower lining areas outside of the protection system, mandatory evacuation, voluntary evacuation, for all others. The storm surge watch remains in effect for all of our coastal areas of southeast Louisiana as well as the coast of Mississippi. The good news too for us is that the Mississippi River is at a low of four feet. We're maintaining frequent contact with all of our local stakeholders as well as our authorities. I had a conversation with our governor earlier this morning and of course, he stands ready to assist our city in any capacity that is needed. But that constant level of communication is happening, as well as with my parish presidents across our area, staying in contact. We started, as we always do, well into yesterday, even into the night and early into this morning. Some news that we just received not too long ago, a little bit prior to 10 a.m., is that our Saints game that was scheduled for Saturday has now been pushed up to 12 noon. So this um, puts added strain, of course, on the New Orleans Police Department, but we're confident that we're going to work through it. And what I mean by that specifically is that we do have a funeral, a large funeral plan for a Saturday, that being De Detective Briscoe, which is now along the same uh, time frame of the Saints game. However, uh, the chief is in constant communication. He will do what it, whatever's necessary, but at the same time, we have to ensure that our officers, all of our public safety officials and our teams can take care of their families so that they can immediately pivot to taking care of you, the city of New Orleans. The parking lot in our city, we've suspended any vehicles that are not city vehicles. So as we would normally open up and ask or pretty much provide access to our parking lots to those who are attending the Saints game. Unfortunately, that has been suspended because we do have to take care of city vehicles 
in a timely manner, again, for us to be able to respond post-storm. Sanitation. Uh, residents are encouraged absolutely to secure trash and recycling carts ahead of the storm. Everyone knows uh, that we've had areas in our city that have been impacted um, significantly with trash collections and timely pickups, that of our contractor Metro. If your trash is not picked up by Saturday, expect it not to be picked up until post storm. So what that means, if it's not picked up by Saturday, bring those cans in, hold that debris. The city of New Orleans is planned and absolutely prepared to activate trash collections with our independent contractor based on emergency response. So residents, you will be able to get collections happening post-storm that will not be dependent at all upon Metro. I just want to make that uh, very clear um, because we know, and as we've reported, they con continue to be behind at least a day and a half. Bottom line, if it's not picked up in your area by Saturday afternoon, bring it in. Also, RTA. What well, will remain in full operations in terms of all transit modes as long as the weather conditions allow. Now, with RTA, much like Entergy, 35 miles per hour in terms of that wind factor will determine when we have to remove the full operations of RTA. So we'll continue to monitor that. I encourage everyone, everyone, text NOLA Ready to 77295. This is so that you can receive timely text alerts from the city of New Orleans. I encourage, again, everyone to do so. This just provides great resources, and everyone, we need to be as connected as possible. As I've told my team in the briefings this morning, communication is our greatest tool, especially now. Activation of sandbags will be deployed starting this afternoon at 2 p.m. while supplies last. Uh, we have been in contact, of course, with the New Orleans City Council and in my administration. I include them in my mayoral briefings as well. But as in the spirit of partnership and as we've indicated in the past, the sandbag uh, collection and those stops are in tight coordination, not only with the fire department, but with the council members. So again, you'll get more information about those locations, which are consistent, uh, the same locations that we've had uh, previously. Our mandatory vaccinations, you know, I did that mandatory requirement for all city employees that was expected to go into effect on Monday morning. What I'm doing is um, uh, suspending that for 10 days so that that has no impact at all on our ability as a city and as public servants to respond to the needs of our residents as well as our visitors if that's necessary. If you need something, we need you to say something and do not wait. So with that, I'm going to now turn it over to Colin Arnold, our Director of Homeland Security. Of course, uh, we will move down uh, the line for briefings. We'll turn it over for Q&A to you, and um, we'll respond accordingly. So thank you all again. Car um, Colin? Right you. All right. Morning, everyone. New Orleans Office of Homeland Security and Emergency Preparedness is closely monitoring Tropical Storm Ida along with our public safety and infrastructure partners at the local, state, and federal level. As Mayor Cantrell mentioned, she's delivered a, uh, signed a declaration of emergency, which should reflect the, this morning, this afternoon. Our city's emergency operations uh, center up here on the ninth floor will move into a full hurricane activation as the storm approaches, anticipating starting up full 24-hour activation tomorrow, although staff is already there and has been working throughout this week uh, looking at this storm. Being east of this storm's track is not ideal. We're uh, anticipating significant impacts, uh, including tropical storm force or stronger winds uh, that could cause down trees and prolonged power outages. Uh, heavy rain in excess of 10 inches that could, uh, and now that's over a day or two, could cause significant street flooding 
And obviously our storm surge is a concern outside of our levee uh, uh, system, which, you know, right now projecting 7 to 11 feet, again, that's outside levee protection, uh, which necessitated that mandatory evacuation the mayor just spoke of outside levee protection. Um, we have a hurricane storm surge and flash flooding watches up right now. They came up last night. Uh, that's the 36 hour mark. You can anticipate warnings coming out at the 24 hour mark, which should be this afternoon. Uh, for these reasons, we're making the following announcements. As the mayor mentioned, we're calling for a mandatory evacuation of areas outside of the hurricane storm damage risk reduction system, the levee system. That includes Lake Catherine, Irish Bayou, Venetian Isles. Uh, these residents are very familiar with the weather and familiar with these situations. Um, we know that that should start now because as you'll hear from, uh, from Regional Director Chandler uh, with our Flood Protection Authority, great partner, the Highway 90 and Highway 11 floodgates will close at some point tomorrow afternoon. You know, we do this because one, seven to 11 feet is significant, and two, it becomes increasingly difficult to move in and out that area of those areas once those floodgates are closed. You still have access through St. Tammany Parish, but it does make it more difficult. So be safe if you're living outside of levee protection in Orleans Parish. Uh, again, the mayor mentioned um, all evacuations are voluntary. We do have a voluntary evacuation for Orleans Parish inside the levee system. Dangerous winds and rain pose a significant threat inside the levee system as far as street flooding, but mainly power outages. We believe, you know, as we saw from Zeta last year, uh, we will have significant power outages. If you are elderly, if you are dependent on power, if you have medical conditions that dictate it, if that evacuating is your best choice, you need to take that responsibility seriously and start now. Uh, should, you know, this strengthen further, we'll address that. Parking on neutral grounds and sidewalks will be allowed tomorrow starting at noon. I would pay attention today because we were under a, fl a flood advisory earlier today just for normal rain. And what I would say about that is when we're on the east side of a storm, don't focus on the storm itself. We will get those bands before leading up to the storm coming ashore and we will have bands coming in after. So Monday is still in play as well as far as gusty winds, not hurricane force winds, but gusty winds and uh, you know, may potentially heavy amounts of rain. So we're certainly on the wetter side of this storm and we need to pay attention to that. I want to be clear that we are really focusing on this storm's intensity, which is the most difficult thing the Weather Service will tell you to predict. It, it's very difficult to predict. We, you know, we're at a tropical storm right now. We know that potentially it could come ashore as a three, as, a, as either you know, this morning a lower level three, it could be a mid or higher level three. We are looking at that. Um, what they have seen, though, is consistency in track, which is good as far as, you know, the track of this storm moving towards the central Louisiana coast. Please continue to pay attention. It's going to be the most important thing because these things change frequently. We watch every day. We watch every four hours as these, as these advisories come out. We're constantly tracking this weather. We ask that our public do the same. Gather your emergency supplies. Evacuate if you feel that that is the best solution for your individual needs. Check on loved ones and heed our warnings. The best way to do that, ready.nola.gov. We have an entire website dedicated to these types of situations. Text NOLA Ready to 77295 and follow us on social media at NOLA Ready, all platforms. We will continuously update you with everything that we know when we know it and any changes that come forward. And we will get through this like we've gotten through so many storms before. We all remember last season. We know that August 29th is a very critical date in our, in our city's history and in all, in all of our collected memories. But that date has also taught us to be ready and to be resilient, and that's what we're going to do together. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. Thank you very much. And I'm going uh, to move it forward. Uh, Dr. Jennifer Begno, the New Orleans Health Department. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, hi, everybody. Once again, we find ourselves uh, dealing with a nat natural disaster in the midst of a pandemic. And so our, our plea and our hope is that everyone will prepare for both uh, very seriously and very thoroughly. So while you're making your plans, whether that is to stay with family and loved ones, whether that is to go elsewhere, uh, please make sure you are making plans to stay healthy and safe. Uh, and the way you do that is by masking when you are not. 
We're going to take a quick two minute break right here on Live Now from Fox. Live with, please mask to stop the spread, whether you are going somewhere or, or just going to someone's house down the street. Uh, make sure you're cleaning thoroughly as you always have, distance as much as possible, avoid large crowds. And if you have not been vaccinated, it, there is still time to do that today. We urge you to do that, to give yourself just that extra protection. If you are vaccinated, thank you. Uh, that will help us prevent an outbreak coming from uh, the aftermath of, of the threat here. Um, I will say that if you are someone or a family member of someone who has medical special needs and you're not on our special needs registry, please call 311 and we can get you put on the registry so that we know who you are and where you are uh, in the event that the storm does make a hit and, and things change. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Vagno. Uh, Director Morris. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Good morning, everybody. Um, OPCD stands ready to respond to the needs of our residents and our visitors as Tropical Storm um, Ida uh, approaches our area. Uh, the agency did go on standby status this morning at 7 a.m. And just prior to this uh, briefing, I did give the order to elevate our staffing level to level two tomorrow at, at 7 p.m., 1900 hours. What that means is staff that were normally off, half 50% of them are called in and they will begin to work. So the agency staffing will increase by 50%. The reason why that's critical is that we have to make ourselves available to respond to the needs of the special operations from the public safety agencies and the particular needs of our city um, residents once the storm makes landfall. I have placed our state resources, our telecommunications emergency response task force on a pre-alert status to respond to the New Orleans area should the need arise. We've made special requests to the state to in increase our infrastructure support around uh, public safety communications for our public safety agencies to ensure they remain online to meet the needs of you all on the ground. One way you can help us, exercise a little patience. You know, 911 should be reserved for life-threatening emergencies only. Please, I cannot stress that enough. If you have a non-emergency, you can call our 10-digit non-emergency line at 504-821-2222 or call 311 and press 1 for a public safety non-emergency. 311 and 911 will remain available throughout the duration of this uh, event, 24 hours a day. Um, again, 911 is for life-threatening emergencies only. If you are a family that is experiencing or, or may have a special need and you have not registered for the special needs registry, please call 311. Our staff are there now to uh, make that registration happen. And also the special needs uh, call center is also stood up to process those as well. If you have a general 311 normal complaint that's not related to the storm, I ask that you text those to us, please, and reserve the phone lines for individuals who do not have the technology in place to do so. You can text yes or hello to 311 yes, and our virtual robot will answer your question just like as if you're speaking to a person um, on the phone. So if you need to request a large item pickup, um, as you would a, a normal, request a catch basin that needs to be cleaned, all those things are important to us, and we need the information to ensure we respond the best way possible. But leave the phone lines open for individuals who cannot go to the website, nola.gov slash 311, or text us at 311 yes. Um, that's all. Thank you very much.